Welcome to Love and Light Ministries International under the leadership of Bishop Dr. Mark S. Herod and Co-Pastor Rev. Kathy Ann Herod. We are located in the beautiful island of Barbados. Join us Sundays at 8.30 a.m. and on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. for our services. Remember to like, share, and follow our Facebook page every day as we share daily truths from the Word of God with our Bishop, Dr. Mark S. Herod. We look forward to seeing you come and experience the power of God as Love and Light Ministries proclaiming the love of Christ, the power, and the light of the Word. God bless you. Good Sunday morning to one and all. Let us give God thanks and praise. We are thanking him for his presence in our, this house this morning as we declare that God is worthy to be praised. We declare that God is mighty. We declare that God is faithful. Let us lift our hands this morning to give God praise all over this house as we exalt the King of Kings, as we exalt the Lord of Lords. We can open our eyes and say, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. We declare this morning that God is a faithful God. Amen. We declare that God is a mighty God. We are thanking him for his presence in this house. And as we give him praise and thanks today, we want to encourage each other to lift up the name of Jesus. For those who are viewing this morning, we welcome you. We welcome you to our sanctuary this morning here at Love and Light Ministries International. And we declare that you will continue to worship with us as we give God thanks and praise. So Heavenly Father, this morning, we stand in your presence. We stand in your midst, Lord, to lift up your name. A name that's above every name, God. There's no other name like and but your name this morning. Father, we are thankful that you give your son, Jesus Christ, to die upon the cross for us. We are thanking you, God, for your son that shed his blood so that each and every one of us, Lord, could be set free from our sins. God, this morning we are grateful. We are thankful for every opportunity that we can lift up a name that is above every name. We are thankful that you are sovereign. God, we are thank you that you will continue to be faithful. We are thankful, God, that you continue to be merciful and mighty and glorious. Yes, that's who you are. You are God all by yourself. So, Lord, we stand in your presence this morning to lift up your name. We stand humbly before you to rejoice. God, we open our mouths and say, thank you, Lord. We open our mouths together to worship you. Come on, we open our mouths to declare that he is God. We put our hands together. We clap onto the Lord. We make no hallelujah. We don't want to make an empty noise, but we want to make a noise this morning. Oh, hallelujah. We want to tell God how much we love and how much we worship and glorify his name. God, we are thankful this morning for this opportunity, God, that we can stand in your presence, God. Father, you be thankful, God, that if there's only one person here this morning, God, you would have died, Lord God, for that person's sins. But there are more than one, there are more than two. We are thankful this morning that we can come in your presence to lift up your name, O oh God. Father, we give you praise today, Lord. We pray, God, that your presence will continue to be in this place, God. We pray your, your presence, God, will continue to live in our lives, oh God. Father, we pray that we will have clean temples, God, that you can dwell in our lives, that you can dwell in the midst of us today, Lord. Father, we are thanking you, God, for every opportunity that we can lift up your name, Holy Spirit. God, we pray the blood of Jesus Christ all over this sanctuary, God. We are thanking you for the blood of Jesus Christ, God. I pray even now, O oh God, that you will surround this sanctuary, O oh God, as we are in agreement today, Lord. Let the blood of Jesus Christ just surround this place, O oh God. We give you thanks and we give you praise like only you can, Lord, because there is none like you today, God. Father, we are lifting our hands to say thank you, God. We are lifting our hands just to give you a wave offering, God, to thank you for our hands, oh God. As we stand this morning, we thank you for our feet. Oh God, as you open our mouths, we declare, Lord, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Let everything that have breath glorify the Lord. Let everything that have breath open our mouths and say praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Come on, people, let's praise the Lord in this house. Let's glorify the name of the Lord today. Let's honor him with our mouths. Let's honor him with our our lips. Let's honor him with our hearts today, God. We are thanking you in advance for all that you are doing this place today, oh God. Father, I pray today, God, that, oh Lord, we will stand and thank you, God, that we can worship you and we can praise you, God. Father, we thank you for every song that will be lifted up in worship today, God. We are thanking you, God, for every life, oh God, that have come here this morning to praise you. We are thanking you this morning, God. We are thanking you, God. We are thanking you, God. We are thanking you, God. Come on, God. Is, God want to be pleased with our worship. Come on. 
Thank him, thank him. Somebody just thank him today. Come on, just thank him. Thank God. God is waiting on us to worship. God is waiting on us to praise him. God is waiting on us to open our mouths and just declare his name as God Almighty. Oh, God. Lord, help us, oh, God, that we can have that breath to breathe, oh, God. Father, help us all to take this breath for granted, oh, God. Help us all to take our speech for granted. Help us all to take, God, your praise and worship for granted, God. We thank you today that everything that we do would bring you honor. Everything we do today would bring you glory. Everything we do, oh God, it would bring you praise. Lord, touch us once again, oh God. From our feet to the top of our heads, Lord God. Our hearts, oh God. Everything we offer to you, oh God. Let it be a clean and a sweet sacrifice of praise today, God. Have your way in this house today, God. Touch the Sunday school. God, touch the outbounds of this sanctuary today, God. Touch the ushers, God. Touch our leaders, oh God, our elders, oh God, our, our pastors, oh God, our bishop, God. Cover every individual today, God. As we stand to give you praise, let your will be done in this house. And we declare that you are God Almighty. In Jesus' name I declare, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is a good morning. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome to Love and Light Ministry International. It's so amazing. God is so amazing. Just know outside was just so overcast and dark. And now look at outside. It is bright and beautiful. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody raise a praise this morning. Somebody lift your hands to exalt your King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. So thank you for another day of life that we have breath. Many are hushed and gone this morning, but we are alive. Hallelujah. And we give you the glory, Lord. We give give you the the honor. We give you the praise (laughs) because you are worthy. And we are thankful people, yeah? So clap those hands if you are thankful, people in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 30. Psalm 31 to 12 says, I will exalt thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment in his favor of life. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity I said I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor, Thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide my face, and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood? When I go down to the pit, shall the dust praise thee? Shall I declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Thou, Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned from me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. He has girded me with gladness. Hallelujah. To the end that my glory may sing praises to thee and not be silent. I say it again. To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee. Who is thee? To God and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sing praises unto God. Hallelujah. He said he will turn every situation around. And if you don't have a situation this morning and you can stand in the gap for someone, we're going to declare this morning, he said he will turn it around. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy, worthy to be praised, worthy to be exalted. Somebody come and shout to the Lord. Somebody exalt him this morning. Somebody yell at your Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worthy.
worthy, worthy, worthy are you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We lift you up, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Yeshua, oh, Yahweh, hallelujah. Worthy, worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you will turn it around. Hallelujah, Jesus. Every situation, we give you glory, Lord, even now. Hallelujah. He said he turn it around. God said, I said he will turn it around. He said he turn it around. I said he will turn it around. For the devil. What the devil meant for evil.
situation right now is more for you to praise. More reason for you to praise. Hallelujah. Because when and if those situations come, you know God will turn it around because he is a faithful God. Hallelujah. And he is here this morning. He is here this morning. He said that the two and threes are better. He is in the midst. Hallelujah. And God is always with us. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
here, Lord. Thank you for being here. Reveal yourself to us, O oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we declare, Lord oh God, that your promise in all situations is still strong. Because you are a faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You shall never leave us nor forsake us, O oh God. In our ups and our downs, Lord. And we will give you glory. And we will give you honor. And we will give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. So we declare that this promise still stands. Because great is his faithfulness. Amen. Hallelujah. Walk in a world. Walk in a world. Thought by now they fall, but you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come, waiting for change to come. Knowing the battles won, knowing the battles won. For you have never.
parted the Red Sea. You are the God who caused the lame to walk and the blind to see. Hallelujah. You can still do it. Hallelujah. Anybody has a testimony? Anybody has a testimony? To declare, yes, Lord, your promise to Your promise. Your promise. Your promise, you're not a man, you cannot lie. Hallelujah, you are faithful, God, faithful, God, faithful, God. Hallelujah. And it's my confidence. You will never, 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 never fail me. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. everything about us. Amen. Every hair in your hands. Hallelujah. He is faithful. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Hallelujah. He is too faithful. Hallelujah. Somebody raise a praise. Somebody worship your king. He is faithful, faithful. Hallelujah.
who committed to leave me. That's our God. You are too consistent to leave me halfway. Oh, aren't you sorry?
formed against you. Come on. Lord, break. Break every stronghold. We're doing some warfare here right now. that one more time lift your hands lord your name yeah your name is power receive that come on your, your name, name is healing. healing can you see it can you your feel it believe it come on man let the enemy know that come on yo break, break every stronghold right now god if somebody here this morning needs to declare that over your life another time. There's power in the name of Jesus. Somebody say it one more time. Your name. Your name is power. Your name is healing. God and God. Your name is love. Say it over your life. Break. Break every strong. Lord, right now, shine. shine through the shadows. Come on. Burn like a fire. Church, I want to hear you say it now. Whatever position you are in, say it. Your name is. Sing. There's something to be praying about. In the name of Jesus, it is broken. But you've got to believe it. Cause God, you're God and God alone. Break every stone. Shine through. Now open your mouth and, and get on like if you got your victory already. Open your mouth and get on like if you have your deliverance already. Don't let no devil steal your joy. Don't let no rocks cry out for you in the midst of the fire. You don't want to feel it. Release it. Hallelujah! Somebody needs to break that thing over your life by shouting. I know what I'm talking about because I don't feel like it. I, I'm a little tired. I had a hard weekend, but I'm standing here and declaring that the God we serve is bigger than any circumstance. How many of you know that the God that we serve is not created by human hands? I'm glad this morning that the God that I serve is not dependent on any mortal man. Because you see, a mortal man might forget me. <laughs> a mortal man can't help me. How many of you know that we serve a God who is in need of nothing that we can give? lyrics. You're not a God. That's the one I'm talking about. You're not a God. I actually spoke the lyrics here just now. <laughs> but that's all right. He was more in the, he knows that I'm a, I'm a traditional man. So. But folks, seriously, I, I, I am believing that the only way we're going to be able to get a breakthrough is if we're worshipers. There's something about worship. I, I just talk about singing songs, but when you start to declare certain things about the Lord, things in the atmosphere has to shift. Why? Because instead of our seeking to worry about our problems, we speak to who God is. And God, this morning, we say that you are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any man. You are God and God alone. Let's do this song. You're not a God created a by human hands. You're not a God. Come on, I want you to sing this thing if you know him. Sing. You're not a God in need 
Open your mouth and declare it. I don't care how you feel. Come on. Your plan, that's just the way it is. Sing that again. You're not a God created. He's all powerful. Human hands. Come on. You're not a God dependent. Hallelujah. Any mortal man. Come on. You're not a God in need of. Come on. Anything we can give. Let me hear the chorus. That's just the way it is. What are you going through? What are we declaring this morning? Oh, you are God alone, dear. I don't care how you feel. You he is God, God alone. We declare, and right now, right now hey, in the good time, in the bad, woo, you are on, on your throne. Sing the chorus again for me. God alone. God, you are God alone. Yeah. That's right. You are on your Has throne. Has nothing to do with how you feel. Come on, you, you are, are God. God In the good times, we're still going to give you praise. We're still going to lift up your name. Say, you're not a God. None can contend. Sing, you're the only God whose name. Whether we want to do it or not. You're the only God who's worthy of everything we can give. You're God, and that's just the way. Oh my God! Somebody give Woo! God the praise. Yeah. Hey, begin. Sing. You are on your throne. We don't care what the devil brings. You are God. Right now, right here. Hey. Power, you're the only God who's power. You want to start with you singing? Don't mind what the devil bring. Come on, you're the only God whose name is praise will never end. Say, you're the only God. Oh, come on, somebody of everything we can hear. Say, you are God. Yeah, that's just the way it is. Somebody lift your hands. trust you. you are on your God, I'm going to believe you. you I'm not going by what I see. And right now, and right now hey, in the good, God, in the valley, hey, you are, you are on your throne. You are God alone. How many believe we are singing this morning? Here, I, I want you to do something crazy for me. I want you to, if you're able, to lift one of your hands and just start to rock with the Lord this morning. Come on. Father, we honor you. We exalt you. Lord, we magnify your name. We understand that God, in the midst of our valley, <laughs> we still got to lift you up. Father, in the midst of looking for a miracle and it hasn't turned up yet, we still got to honor you, God. Father, in the midst of our disappointments, uh, in the midst of our loss, uh, in the midst of our pain, you are still God. You are still almighty. You are still worthy. You are still sovereign. You are still the king of kings. You are the Lord of Lords. Hey, you are mighty God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody say, you are God. You are God. Hey, you are God alone. Yeah. You don't have to feel it. That is a reality. Come on. And right now. And right now. Hey. Woo. One more time. Sing again. You are God alone. Yeah.
That's right. Come on. You are not alone. And right now. And right now. Yeah. Let me hear the church. You are God. You are God alone. You're so good. That's right. Come on. Hey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. One more time. One more time. You are God alone. Fight sins. Fight sins. War saints. Come on. Some of you can get on rough. This. Come on. You can get on like crazy right now. And yeah. I believe you're gonna declare some more. Devil is a liar. Sing again. You are God alone. Open your mouth and give God a praise. Don't depend upon a song. We honor you. We honor you. There is something. Keep praising. Keep praising. He's unshakable. He's unstoppable. We know who he is. Come on, somebody. Honor the Lord. Come on, man. Stop it. Just won't work. Yeah, come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, worship. Don't we up on the song? Worship, worship, worship. Worship. Take some time and worship me, God. Father, we Father, we honor you this morning. We honor you, Father. The heavens declare. Sing, come on, come on. Come on, come on. we got to push our worship to another level. Come on. Because we need deliverance in this house. Come on. Come on, man, play. They shall respond. Are we going to do that too? To God to pray. To who? To the Lord of God. Yeah. So let the earth join creation song. Yeah. And with one voice sing to God. Let me hear you. We honor you and adore you. Glorify yeah. Oh, yeah. I love to know this. Jesus, you came. Declare it. Down from the sky. Sometimes we forget. Oh, God. No greater love. There's ever been. I could ever be. <laughs> The moment you gain your life, life from our here with sin, righteousness. righteousness. Oh, yeah, the perfect sacrifice. You, you are, yeah, sin. Jesus, the Son of God. Oh, Son of God. Lift your hands and say, We honor you, Lord. And adore you. I need somebody to say, Oh, yeah. Jesus, you came. Let's appreciate him this morning. Not ask for nothing. Appreciate him for what he's already done. Lord, you were willing to die for me. Yeah. There's no greater love. 
Jesus is or never will be. Let's thank you for that this morning. You died for our sins. Oh, righteous in every way. You are Jesus, the Son of God. Somebody say, Son of God. We are. I get something away this morning. Oh, you. Somebody say, Oh, yeah. Lord, we lift you up. We magnify you, Lord. Somebody say, oh, yeah. God, Jesus, oh, yeah. God, I've got to glorify you. Uh, somebody say again, one more time. this morning in the midst of your challenges I hear God saying that you need to worship him some more I hear God saying that in the midst of your sadness in the midst of your challenges God says give me a praise I hear God saying shout out my name we sang it already because in the name of Jesus the Bible says that demons tremble. I, I don't know what the devil is doing, but I know that once I holler for Jesus, the Woo! devil got to tremble. Eh? When I start to declare things about God, that he is almighty God all by himself. Eh? He's the author and finisher of my faith. Eh? He's almighty God. Somebody shout a praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, only family musicians, worship the Lord. Push, push, push. To worship God, all you gotta say is Jesus. Start to see Jesus for the rest of five minutes. Jesus. Jesus. And start to see Jesus. Feel the healing. Jesus. Uh, Jesus. You're gonna go to the Lord's words. Jesus. Uh, Jesus. I know him. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Thanksgiving yesterday is for me. I'm telling you. I went home and had no stand. But this morning, I got up and dressed. And I didn't know understand why Paul suspenders. <laughs> you never see me in suspenders. But God said, I'm suspending you this morning. I'm pulling you up. And God told me to tell the people, he's suspending you this morning. He's pulling you up. I believe today is a new day. Something is going to happen. Something start today. Something shift today. Something new happen from today. Because you have made it. Ten months and two days. That's far. <laughs> and God threw everything at this church for the last 20 years. Not God. God allowed it to happen. God was, I, you, people say, yeah, God threw it. He allowed it to happen. You know why? Because the same way he dressed me to say that he's suspending me this morning. 
he's going to suspend the bishop. He's going to lift him to a higher level. And I declare and I decree. And I want the saints to agree with me that 2025 is all our year for everything that we have been through. God is going to bless him like he blessed Job. I welcome you this morning. With everything that I got, with every thank that I got inside of me. And we sang some powerful songs this morning. And I pray that we will stay in our posture of worship. Amen. 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 So I welcome you. I come to do my official duty this morning to first welcome all of you here in this beautiful sanctuary this morning. As I look right here, you look also beautiful in your nice colors, independence colors, blues and yellows and everything. But thank God that we don't have to be independent of him. We are dependent <laughs> of God. <laughs> so why we celebrate independence? We never want to be independent of God. We always want to be in the dependence mode with God. As the bishop said, not yes, to run to him, but to run with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. So I welcome you here this morning, those in the sanctuary, those online. So this beautiful Sunday service on November the 3rd, we've made it thus far, and God is good. God is good. And all the time. God is good. And in that posture, you know, I think you can sit, you can have your seats. You deserve it this morning. You lift this house this morning, you lift the roof off this sanctuary. And you also lifted me, you know. That's why we encourage people to come to church, because you don't know sometimes, you might say, Elder, he don't like, he got no issues, you know. Always come in here, clad down, dress and thing, and face smiley. But sometimes they say to you, a lot is going on. But then when we get into this posture of praise and worship, you don't know who you'll be lifting. And you lift me this morning, so I want to thank you this morning for lifting my spirit and for lifting me. So you can put a clap for yourself and for every other person that you lift this morning. I met you that many people in here were lifted. Lamar and Lataria, I want to thank both of you because Lamar looked at you, right? And you encouraged me this morning. You worship did so much that you made um, Minister Linda start to dance in that yellow dress. So your spirit was so rich doing it there. I see, I, I never saw her dance like that before. <laughs> but she danced like David danced this morning. I was watching you, Linda. <laughs> but God is good. All the time, God is good. This morning, we just want to recognize birthdays and anniversaries. So if and before I get there, if there's anyone visiting us, that is always important. Anyone visiting us for the first time, can you please stand at this time so we can acknowledge you? We have our sister here standing. Amen. Put our hands. We have another brother and a sister. God is good. We have another sister. Wow. 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 God asks like that. You can have your seats after you get your gift, a token. God asked for his like, can these dead bones live? He said, only you, God, know. He said, prophesy. I prophesy that this church would increase. Every week, four, five, and six is coming. Uh, these dry bones will come back together. In Jesus' name. God is doing something new, Bishop. Let us be a main focus, family. But we welcome you. We thank you for taking the time for visiting us. I know so far you have been blessed. And it isn't done yet. We give you the cake, but there's still the icing now to you're supposed to have. And we will give you some nice refreshments, the, you know, the others and all the things that you like at the end also. So you can be blessed today. And we thank you for coming. Now, for those joining us on our e-service, we thank you. Because every Sunday you join us there. We're hoping that you will join us here. But we thank you for joining us in that space because we don't know who we are ministering to in a delayed service. Because somebody might watch it tomorrow or next week or next month, and the word of God will continue to bless them. So we want to thank you for joining us, who are online, and it's on that note now that I want to recognize anniversaries and birthdays, anyone in this month celebrating a birthday or anniversary. Woo! Have my brother, and friend, and family, Marlon. Amen. Is there anyone else? If there is none, none. His invisible wife. <laughs> he's, he's <laughs> the set of, the set of two is one, so he's representing both this morning. Amen. Amen. So the beautiful choir now will turn at you with a rendition of the happy birthday song. So I give over to them. Amen.
celebrate a birthday and an anniversary, so every time we have life, we should give everything that we have to celebrate Amen. with our other people and for ourselves. Amen. Amen. I, I before I get to announcement, I now realize that I see a face here. Is this Mr. Philip? That is from Jens. This is the gentleman that used to, you know, as Jens. And it's so good. He, we went, went back many years together, sir. I just looked and saw you. May God continue to bless you. It's good to have you here. Everyone didn't know everybody know Jelf has store. This is the man that was the pioneer behind that. Probably still is. Mr. Philip, may God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Amen. Put your hand together for my brother. Brother in Christ. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Today I go on with the announcements. And the first one is on the social and family evening that we had last week. The Corporate Events Committee would like to say a big thanks to you and to everyone who organized, contributed, and assist to make the event, the family, and fun evening a success. And I would say a redounding success because I came through and I saw the kids having fun, the jumping tent, and the big people playing the little games. Say once a man, twice a child. And it's good. You, you got to come before God with a child-like attitude. So you did display that last week when I saw it. So the committee um, have or, has already thanked you for this. And they also had a great evening. They, they recognize that you had a great evening and with games, karaoke, laughter, and much more. And as I said before, the children truly did enjoy themselves tremendously. So to give your hands together for the social and family events committee. Amen. So, Bible study. Um, this week, our March ministry conference begins. Therefore, this Wednesday, the 6th, November, the 6th, November 2024, we will ha be not having any prayer and Bible study here at the St. Pray. So, because of the March ministry event that we're having, the conference actually, there will be no service for prayer and Bible study this Wednesday. November the 6th here in the sanctuary. We'll be meeting next week, the 13th of November 2024, for our usual session. Our final prayer and Bible evening for the year will be held on Wednesday the 27th of November 2024. And we have a time to look back during the session, and we will also have refreshments for those who will attend. We encourage you to join us as we experience and encounter the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit as God direct us to the evening plan. So just a couple notes. In summary, this Wednesday, there will be no Bible study here in the sanctuary. But the next Wednesday, the 13th, there will be Bible study here. Um, and then on the 27th, we'll be closing off. And that will be our time for reflection, for prayer, and also to get together as we pivot and look forward into 2025. Okay? So please pencil those notes, those important dates so that you can remember them. Connected, the Marriage Ministry Conference, and I'm proud to present this particular one, and I want to say Love and Light Ministries International, and I repeat again, Love and Light Ministries, in brackets, international, in partnership with Dr. Paul Cannons and Paul Watt Ministries, presents Connected, a Marriage Ministry Conference like no other. And that'll be taking place at the Restoration Ministries International at Britain's Hill, St. Michael, and the dates are from November 5th to 7th at 7.30 p.m. nightly. So November 5th to 7th at 7.30 p.m. nightly. And that will be held at Restoration Ministries. Um, you should have registered by now. But if you haven't, please speak to Reverend Caffey. And Herewood. Herewood. Anyone who was here before knows my joke with Herewood. Not Yearwood. Herewood. Amen. So please register with the Reverend Kathy, just in case there's still room for you to attend. Uh, we look forward for your participation at these sessions. And the Lama Light Ministries International, led by our bishop, would like to thank you in advance. Just want to put a plug here. Um, I'm really excited about this. And one of the visions for Lama Light Ministries um, is that we go international. And I believe this partnership, Bishop, is not by accident. I believe 2025 is the year we're going to be launched. It's going to be an impact, a global impact that's going to be done with Love and Light Ministries members. I believe you should put your hands for that, together for that because you're prophetically declaring that from this week coming, we have already entered the realm of the international stage by partnering with 
our brother and our friend, Dr. Paul Tan. And I know he's going to be dynamic. He's going to bring his energy, similar to what he brought his energy when we had our anniversary service. I heard him on the radio. He's excited. He's all ready to go. And we just want to put a plug here. If you know you can bless someone, because I believe in 2025, God is going to use margins. He's going to go back to the foundation of the institution that was the first. And the first institution was marriage. It was not government. It was not an organization. It was marriage to Adam, Adam and Eve. And I believe he's going to go back to the foundational stuff of his first institution, marriage, to have the impact that I spoke about in 2025 through marriages. And I believe it's going to start from this week. I'm professing it, I'm declaring it, and I'm decreeing it. That you're going to invest, if you can, in a couple that you might know that is struggling at this time, and you have some resources to buy a ham or some curtains. I'm asking you to divest that and reinvest it into someone. You will be blessed for it. I say again, you will be blessed for it because you'll be going back to God's first principle, marriage. And because you are going to do that, I'm declaring and decreeing for you that resources will find you from the north, from the east, from the south, and from the west. And I don't take this lightly. I wouldn't say this just because I want to be aloof. But I believe the Spirit of God is speaking today through this particular portion of announcement. So if you know you can do it, if you know you can bless that family that you see quarreling every day, the children are struggling, and you believe that you have some money there, yes, the curtains in that particular store in Swan Street, yes, you have your eyes on them. I ask you to take that money and bless someone. And I'm not speaking to only here, I'm speaking to everyone that's listening to the song of my voice in the e-service. Because I believe that when God starts to do what he do next year with marriages, you're going to say, I was part of that. Don't be quiet on me. Just say amen. 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 I leave it there. Let the spirit do the rest. The curtains will be fine. The ham will come there. <laughs> There's not much chickens on the market, but they will come too. Amen. Amen? Amen. So couple speed speed to Reverend Kathy after service about your registration. We go on to radio program. Tune in to Truth for the Living on Live 97.5 FM on Thursday at 10 a.m. Amen. You may encourage and enlighten through the power of God's word with our own Bishop Dr. Mar S. Hayward. So please, radio program. You remember it's every Thursday at 10 a.m. And that is on 97.5 FM. Amen. Children's ministry, church, we have many things. So the announcements are long, so bear with us. Children's ministry, the children's ministry has completed promotion center. I would like to wish and thank everyone for their overwhelming support. As they know, um, are focusing on the Christmas gifts drive. We are asking for your support to buy the gifts for our child to be distributed or our annual Christmas party. The ministry is also asking for those gift bags that you might have at home just sitting there waiting to be used, your generosity is appreciated. These bags will assist with the presentation of the gifts given to the children at the Christmas party. Don't forget to speak to Elder Yvette or Elder Linda to offer your support. Also the Kings, that is Lamar and Latar, would like to thank everyone for their tremendous support during the la last couple of weeks and particularly yesterday as the angel was laid to rest. And on this point, I just want to say, Lotaria and Lamar, we know that God has this. We keep saying this with you. And even as I said yesterday, you know, I, I will repeat just briefly here, when God says, suffer the children, forbid them not to come to me, for that is the kingdom of God. I understood that for the first time from your situation. And God give it for you, also take it for you, understand that in your eulogy. And what I want to say here is that your name that you give the son, and I said it, yes, I say it, repeat it here, Kairos was a spiritual opportunity. It was an appointed time. And you know how I know the confirmation? And you said Lazani was of Lazarus. You see, God is awesome. He always speaks. Lazarus was rose on the fourth day. Four people gave them life to the Lord yesterday. So even as I reflected on that when I went home, there was a purpose for Lazani coming only for 10 days. But people like Elder Pyle will tell you, 
Who's the theologian? That 10 in the Bible means perfection, completeness, divine order. So I believe, as you said yesterday, Lazani completed his divine order. And four people, like Lazarus was rose on the fourth day, four people give them life. A, a child that only spent 10 days on the earth. That should minister to us. That 10 days, somebody should be applauding. 10 days, didn't even utter a word. But the power that was in Lazani and the purpose led four people to Christ at a Thanksgiving. That's why we come to church and that's why you should praise God. Thank you, Lord. Say hallelujah. So continue to remember these beautiful couples in prayer. Like Job, God would bless you. A hundredfold. I'm not saying that you have many more children, but if it's God's will, let it be. Amen. Prayer corner. Continue to pray for one another. Pray for God's peace over them. Pray for the unsaved family members. Pray for the St. George community. Pray for those who are sick among us, especially pray for our seniors who we don't see at church. And remember that we are our brothers and sisters keeper. Pray for our children. We need that very much now. Pray for our education system. Pray for our nation, Barbados. And for all those grieving families in our nation, pray diligently for our young people, especially the men. Continue to pray for our church and its finances and all the resources that is needed. And I declare they shall come from the north, from the east, from the south, and the west for this particular part of the vineyard. I also want to pray for those people in Spain, in Valencia, and we take God's word and his presence and his salvation for granted sometimes. But there's over 200 people when you read the news. Perish. And we are some time since. I'm taking a lot of time here. I'm going to hand over shortly. Yes, yeah, so we're going to go over it. So, Father God, I just pray this morning that we will pray for the people in Spain. Because those people need our prayers right now. Okay? A gentle reminder. If you have any prayer requests, praise report, suggestions, comments, or concerns, feel free to drop them in the box at the front. And the box is right here. Remember that the gatekeepers will meet every second and third Saturday in succeeding on your request. And your names are optional. So please, if you want to, please leave your names for your prayer request. I want to thank you this morning for your patience and your attention for the foregoing notice. I know I might have made some punctuations, but I thought this was quite important. And I thank you for your attention. At this point, we will go on to our offering. This is a time where we stand. I'm not going to be sure now this morning. She does a great job, but I'm just going to pray this morning that God's will will be done, even as we give back to him. So can you stand with me? Because we are standing in a posture of thanksgiving for what God has blessed us for, with, sorry, that we are not going to give back to him. So you know the bikes are here. You have the tithes, you have the offerings, you have the benevolent fund. And you have the plant, the seed baskets, respectively. Amen. So, Father God, this morning, we are eternally grateful, first, that we are found in our right mind. We are thankful this morning, Lord, that we could come into this house, Lord, to give you thanks, to give you praise, as we did so wonderful this morning. But also, we want to thank you with our resources. We know that the kingdom of God needs resources so that the kingdom of God can be advanced. And I want to thank you for everyone this morning that's going to give with a cheerful heart. And Lord, for those who don't have, there's no condemnation with those. We understand, Father God, that some people will struggle. But I pray that you will provide for them because you're the giver, Lord. You're the one that gives everything. And I pray that resources too will find them at the north, the east, and the south, and the west. So even as we give this morning, it's unto you. We thank you, God, for doing it. So Lord, not our will this morning, but even on our giving, let thy will be done. And we thank you for doing it in Jesus Christ's name. And may the saints of God say amen.
As we remain standing, we're going to prepare to go into right into our commune. Make sure that everybody would have, have their ambulance in their hands. We want to thank God this morning for this time of ministry that we can come before his throne to declare that he is awesome, to declare that he is mighty in the midst of it all. Hallelujah. Father, this morning as we would go into this time of worship and praise to you, I pray God that you would Cover us, Lord. Cover this place even now. As we would prepare to partake of the ambulance this morning, I pray, God, that we will just stand before you, God, with hearts that are open to you, Lord, not only to receive, but to give you thanks and praise for all that you have done in our lives and all that you have done to bring us to this point in our lives. And we give you thanks, Lord. We pray that you will consecrate us even now, Lord, as we would partake of the wine and the bread. And we give you thanks for doing it even now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to remind you this morning that the table here at the Love and Light Ministries, we don't take it lightly. And we know that the elements of the Lord's table is the wine and the bread. And we know that his body represents the wafer. That's his, his body that was bruised for our sins. And the wine that we would drink represents his blood that was bruised or was shed upon the cross of Calvary. And we have an opportunity that we can confess anything to God and when we know that we have the opportunity, we want to take it. And we know that if a person does not confess of their sins, that the Bible declares in 1 Corinthians 11, 26 and 27, that they might have an early death. And we don't want to be judged, but we want to make sure that God is given the praise and the thanks as we ask for anything in our lives, even now. All who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and have been baptized, whether you're a member here at our church, or belong to another church, we welcome you to partake at this time. As I would have prayed that you would bless the bread and the wine to our bodies as we would partake. And the Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, the Bible says he took bread and he broke it with his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken on behalf of you. This we do in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's partake of the bread together. In the same way, he took of the cup also. After supping, he said, this cup is my new covenant in my blood. And as often as you drink it, you do this also in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the cup together. give you thanks continually, Lord, as we would truly ask that you direct us continually to live according to your will and plans for our lives. At this time, we have Deandra Herewood, and she's going to render us this morning with a solo. I invite her to come at this time. Put your hands together for Deandra. 
Hello, good morning, everybody. You could sit. Um, so my solo today um, is All the Heavens, and it's from Hillsong. And I have a verse to go with it. And the verse is taken from Psalms 148, verses 1 to 5. But I will add in 6, because after reading it, I feel I should read 6 as well. So it says, Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the sky. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for this command they were created, and he established them for ever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. And for me personally, this week was rough because I had a lot of projects that were due, and because I had little motivation, I had to do it last minute. But I got it done. And this song, I know, you know, it just, when I was, you know how you'd be like a Christian from birth, and at that time you'd still like run off. <laughs> so I was a Christian from birth. I gave my life when I was eight, and I remember it exactly how it was. And this song in particular was the one that like, you know, stuck with me because it was a really good song. So, yes, thank you. <laughs>
Thank you very much. No I move, no I move. What you sing? Holy melody. Hallelujah. Let's go. Find the words, just the words. Let's do this, everybody. One more time. We're gonna do it together. Not the music. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Oh. All sorry, nobody <laughs> want the words. We're normally problem with words. Let's do it. All the heavens shout your praise. Beautiful is your God. The universe will sing. Hallelujah. To you, our King. One more time. All the heavens shout your name. Praise. Beautiful is your God. The universe will sing hallelujah to you. Our King. Now, folks, I don't know if you all heard. The three part harmony in the track. The mind too, too loud. That's what we think. Um, the, the, the backup vocals in the track. Three part harmony. This young lady sang and mixed in her bedroom. This is the one. God bless you, honey. It was in your bedroom. Wait, they mind. She has all the equipment there, yeah. She didn't want me to tell one of that. But she has a whole recording thing and everything she does. Now, all three of those parts. Obviously, she came to me for the tenor. So I gave her the tenor part, and then she went and sang it. That's the truth. That's all you know how to sing there. Just want to play that. I know come in. I practice that regular. So I in a star. I just practice it. She tell me to listen to it. I give it to her. So I thought it would come in here and sound like I you know, know what's going on. But we practice that. You But all the parts on that track, she did. A very talented young lady. Keep praying for her. And before you sit, just hug somebody. Share some love. You know, bless somebody. Touch somebody. My feel up, not, not, not sorry, not, I mean feel the love, what feel up, what feel the love. Especially those you don't know, folks. Lamar, every time I hear a little too loud, that's why I get any feedback all the time. Yeah. Check, one, two. That's good. Outside scene, a little hot there. Hallelujah. All right, 60 seconds. Because you all will take the whole morning out. 57. Fifty. Forty-five. Five. Four. Three, two, one and a half, one and one if. Zero point nine five. Praise the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. You had a wonderful time, wonderful worship. God is good. Amen. Isn't God good? Well, let's hear some noise for the Lord. Put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Folks, the title of my little discourse this morning is Harvest Time is Coming. You know, we have been existing for the last 22 years. We would have had our ups and our downs. And I know sometimes we tend to wonder, God, when is our harvest coming we have planted we are in the process of pruning and all these things when is this going to happen believers in Christ this morning I want to encourage the body of Christ in these challenging times I'm encouraging us not to become discouraged or disillusioned let us not allow how things appear and how long they're taking to give us the returns on our investment cause us to waver. Maybe you sit there this morning and you have sown your financial seed or perhaps 
love, kindness, forgiveness, and patience into the soil of your church, into your relationships. And now you're waiting for a return on investment or harvest on what you have sown. Maybe some of you here this morning have been trusting God for a desire of your heart to burst forth in your life, but have not Got, but I've gotten discouraged during the time of waiting between the seed sown and the harvest reap. Be encouraged today. Hold on. Don't quit. You're close, Dana. Don't quit. Harvest time is coming. Look over to somebody and say, I don't know where you're at, but harvest time is coming. Tell somebody. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, we read these words. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap. Did you hear that? At just the right time. Whose time, church? God's time. At just the right time. How many of you waited for your at just the right time? How many of you testify at just the right time? Seem to be taking very long. That's been taking very long. I know I'm there. I've been talking to daddy. Daddy know how I feel. But when I don't ask daddy questions, I say, Lord, I humble. Because at your appointed time, you will do what you have to do. But it says, at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Say it again. Harvest time is coming. This morning, I want to examine about three, just three things or keys as I seek to encourage you to hear. But as I was thinking about it this morning, I don't have it in my notes. The Spirit of God brought back to me three, three stories. How many of you remember Hannah? We are a particular, and women is very hard on the women, but one Palila or Palila, you remember her? Palila, Palila. Give Hannah so much trouble because she didn't have a child, and that was the desire for her heart. But I am telling you this morning, when you are thinking that your harvest is taking too long, I want you to remember this story. She prayed to God. She, asked, she agonized before the Lord. As a matter of fact, she was so under the anointed that it thought she did drunk or crazy, whatever. But I, I note something that Jesus, God, said to her. I think also of the story where, where, where God said to Abraham and his old wife that they're going to have a child, and she laughed. Sarah did. But I remember, I said three stories. Joseph, he knew what God had called him to do. He just thought too fast. He knew what God had called him to do. But how many of you recognize that in all three of these stories, there is something that was significant. There's something that was important. I'm saying to you this, that despite your harvest time is coming, it will come at the appointed time. Somebody say, at the appointed time. God said, to, hey, he said, listen, is there anything too hard for God? Folks, that was a rhetorical question because we know that there is nothing too hard for God. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. But the Bible says, God said, at the appointed time, you shall have a son. Even the coming of Jesus Christ was at the appointed time. Look over to somebody encouraged him for me. Your harvest time is coming. Or, as a church, our harvest time is coming. You see, this is how God works. For love and light's harvest time to come, yours God come too. Because what is going to be required, as you heard, uh, said about the said about 2025 and so on. You know, we said a lot of things about 2020, but you know, there's something diff different in 2025. You know why? Because, folks, how many of us can look at our scars? Anybody? Since COVID, how many of you can look at your scars? Those scars mean something. Are you with me this morning? Those trials and challenges that we have experienced individually and as a church are very important to us now doing what? Experiencing our harvest time. So the three things I want to share with you quickly. Firstly, I want you to look at some words in this. It's one scripture, but watch it. Look at the word there, tired. 
It says, Let not, let's not get tired. In another version, it says, uh, weary. Listen, how many of you will testify that this life could really wear you down? Anybody? And folks, if it ain't work, if it ain't children, if it ain't empty pockets and empty wallets, folks, these old bodies start to quit. Anybody there? Because 22 years ago, you notice I was going to leap on the pulpit regular. I could stand out here preaching up and down. I hold up on here just in case. So there's so many things that can make us weary. But this word depicts one who is tempted to give up because he or she feels confronted by an evil destruction on just person or just some trying circumstance. Many of us can testify that many times we have tried hard to do what is right. Anybody there? We felt crushed or continually resisted by, by some circumstance or person to the point where such opposition causes us to feel tempted to throw in the towel. The towel, the towel. Anybody have been there? Like it's only me and, and, and Mrs. Carmichael. I say to you today that in spite of the destructive forces that may have tried to come against you or loom over your life or a truly unjust situation has reared its ugly head against you, God commands you. Believer, hear me today. God commands us not to surrender. Somebody say, I ain't surrendering. Not to surrender to the temptation or the trial to become weary and give up. Why? Why must we not give up, believers? Because at God's appointed time, harvest time is coming. Continue to tend to your garden. Continue to pull up the weeds. Continue to water them. Continue to be faithful. Do not get weary of good doing and look to God because at the appointed time, believer, you are coming out. At the appointed time, Love and Light Ministries, you are going to experience your harvest. Up to yesterday at the funeral, we were at the church. And these people walk into the church, turn on the equipment, worship team and stand up behind the mics. The monitors were a little, not like ours, sharp, you know, sign me. And when those people start to sing, you thought that there were seeing people here because the equipment wasn't moving all about the place. So when they pressed that button, everything was perfect. We don't have that because we got to take up, put down all the time. And I remember Tyler Marrow said, boy, look, Pastor, we got to get in church, though. So I told him, let's forget it, harvest time is coming. And it is closer than you are, I think. But folks, you got God fear. Some people clap and say, no, but that boy is 22 years. You mean another 22? I am saying that our harvest time is just around the corner. So watch this. We must understand that we must not get tired. You go take some tonic, take it. If you go drink some herb tea, take it. Change your vitamins, change your brand, take it. Now the second word or set of words there, it says, but what are we not getting tired of? Get tired of sin. Get tired of, of the things that is happening in the world that messing up. I want to hear about Jesus. Get tired of that. But you know, you know, you're tired of it. But do not get tired of what? Doing what is good. I want to say not only good, but what is right. This means it is ongoing. Somebody say ongoing. See, so you've got to study these words. Because a lot of times, we think that you do it one time. I do enough good. It's 22 years. I do enough good. I done with that. I do enough good and get hurt. I done. Nobody hurt me no more. You remember that. Jesus said you were going to be tested in all areas. He told you, you know yourself. You think Jesus wasn't hurt when he went into a place that everybody knew him and nobody had no fear at all. And he had to walk away with, with a, a heavy heart because he said, I can't do nothing for the people because they don't have no faith. So somebody heard you, you done doing good? Not me, boy. Going back in that, and the boy heard him. You know, and now you miss out on an opportunity to touch maybe another million people because you allow one body to steal your joy. Let us not let us understand this thing is ongoing un uninterrupted until you die are you with me 
A lot of people say, well, I, I die in ministry now, I'm too old. Well, you better be careful. You're, you're, you're soon dead, yeah. Because here's my thing. If, if you finish, and you ain't doing anything on the earth, you can stand here on a box. Like, you better pray God carry you along. So in other words, the type of doing good that Paul uh, described is not a one-time event, but an ongoing action. As a matter of fact, I call it, it, it must become a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of sowing seeds and deeds. The third thing about this verse, it said just, it says at the right time, at just the right time. Somebody say at just the right time. Some of you have been praying, I'm not saying come yet. Some of you have been searching, ain't happened yet. I want you to say this, God, at your appointed time. Say it again, God, at your appointed time. That should have settled somebody's spirit. Doesn't mean you're lazy. Doesn't mean you stop doing stuff and wait for God to drop something from the sky. But what it means is that you continue to trust God when you can't trace him. Are you with me this morning? So he says at just the right time, or another way we say it, in due season. So we shall reap a harvest for our efforts. Understand that each seed has its own season. Somebody say that for me. Each seed has its own season. Folks, there are some things that your season will cause you to go through. Because if you think about planting and things of that nature, I know many of you all do the garden. Years ago, we used to plant carrots and so on. We try to plant the crops that would give you the yield the quickest. So my mother would plant carrots. Anybody remember beets? Yeah, oh, 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 only a few old people here like me and, and Elder Leroy. And, uh, uh, oh, crazy things that would be quick. So we, like, we used to eat a lot of cuckoo because I could, I could have only eaten oak crisps and cuckoo. Now I eat them, man. If you put salt, pan them, onion, pan them, boil them, fry them, I like oak crisps. If you got any at home, send them. As you like, at least two cups a day. Love them. Pickle oak crisps and all, man. Folks, we, 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 we try to do that, but understand that with God, because he understands beginning to end his process. It might take a, li a little longer than we expect. And remember he says to him, a day is a thousand years about, and vice versa. So sometimes we become so impatient. And I'm telling you, as a pastor, 22 years of this church, I have become impatient. I confess. I confess. And folks, it caused me to be miserable. Too confident, I said, I feel so discouraged. My lady, boy, people make his dog, my pastor, my And I mourn and groan till I get the revelation. And I come to the re realization that if I am not to see our church, I ain't going to see it, not in the natural. I'll be looking down at your people and say, at least I started the foundation. Tell somebody, harvest time is coming. Tell them again. So every seed has its season. And if we are not careful, we will become jealous of people. I tell one of confessing this morning. A certain friend of mine. Just a piece of land that hide away. I look at my Barbados. I can't find it. I dare have to move there, church, and he find it. So the first thing I do is ask the Lord, we Lord, where he just, Lord, Lord, how come you, are you all about Barbados? Say, no, people, they got people in land, right? Lord, come back. And here's what God said to me. Just what I just said to you. Each seed has its own season. You see, if God give us what he has for us before we are ready, we will fail miserably. Through the last years from COVID to now, y'all watch, and, and the message more about the whole thing, but, you know, we, we, we went through it. Listen, we, we watched because God knew that where he was taking us, not everybody will be able to go. So what you might have been sad about, what you might have been disappointed about, what you might have been hurt about, you recognize that if you are trusting in a sovereign God, every single thing is going to work out for good, man. Somebody give God a praise. At just the right time, church, we are going to reap our harvest. And I am saying it is right around the corner. Stand firm. 
Don't get weary. Don't look left or to the right. Look to the one who's the author and finish of your faith. And this is what I'm going to say. If we are going to get to our appointed time as a church, it is not the building. It has to be with us. And there's some of you God is about to bless. Huh? Your harvest time is coming. There's some of you that God is going to pour out some stuff upon. But you're going to have, you see, be fearful with you $100 bill. So that when God gives you the $100,000, you would understand what fearfulness is. Harvest time is coming for us as a church to be blessed. You have to be blessed. You better believe it. Thank God for your blessing in advance. I shall not be shaken. I shall not be moved. Why? Not because I don't get a little depressed sometimes. I would like to see that I don't have to have you people every week. God, take chairs here, pull this thing here. Then I have to be God do this. I wish it wouldn't have to happen, but I think that God in and through it is teaching us something. So that when we, when we now get what God has for us, folks, we will value it, value it more. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our harvest time is coming. But sometimes the Bible is so sweet, it puts the prerequisite after. Anybody see the prerequisite in that verse? It starts with F. <laughs> Anybody see the prerequisite? What must come before? You don't get the time of harvest before the planting and all the trials that that bring, correct? Read. How many of you have ever planted anything? I know, I know our emeritus plant lady. Oh, can't think She's a gardener. To the core. She loves her plants. Maybe one or two of you. How many of you have planted anything? That signs you got your heart on a particular thing, right, right, emeritus? And the more you put your heart on it, the more the thing with it. Anybody be there? But you didn't realize that the plant has to go through a certain process and you have to do what? Take a little bit more care. Because like the other ones, you just throw them in the garden, throw a little water, spit upon them, and they're going to grow. Others, you got to get out every day and watch. Huh? You're tired, you get one leaf and you're celebrating, and then let the leaf drop off. Oh my God. You see, America, they, they ain't got no the planters in here because they may feel in the pain. <laughs> right? You love your plants. Our neighbor opposite us, get my wife in the plants, got my place look good, and she ain't a plant person. No, she out there wetting my plants. My neighbor loved them. Right? What I'm saying to us is that that is the same process. Sometimes some leaves got to drop off. Sometimes the branch got to get a little bend so the Lord could prune it to bring about the miracle in our lives. But folks, we've got to stop being so impatient. Anybody with me this morning? So it says... All of what can happen, the, the appointed time will come, but if we don't give up. What does that say on the other side? That if we give up, we could very well miss the appointed time. Look over to somebody and say, don't give up. I miss the appointed time here. Yeah. Talk to them. Point your finger to. That is crucial. That is crucial. Do not you go giving up. Because I'm boy tells I'm going to hurt y'all. I miss the appointed time. Anybody remember the story of Joseph? You see, everybody promised Joseph. When I go, they remember you. And they'll help me and forget the man. Till what? At the appointed time. Then the fellow remember me. The God fell down in prison. Forget before, for more than 10 years. He could talk about dreams. You see, if we don't faint at any, or if we faint at any point along the way, we can jeopardize. Want to know what jeopardize means? We could abort the situation. We can jeopardize the long-term harvest of what we have sown. There are many of us in here can testify. We have sown our, our blood, tears, sweat, our money. And sometimes people put their money in. They say, well, we don't have money. I put it in my bill. If I see a bill, I ain't put it in the more. You just fainted, though. Me? I used to put my little two. Don't even put it in that. I want pack, pack, pack corn curls. Eh? I eat some chewing gum. I put in the two dollar. Can't see nothing because you don't understand harvest. That you gotta keep planting. You gotta keep nurturing. You gotta keep watering so that at the end of the day. And let me tell you all something. I prophesy. I'm not a prophet like my elder there, but I can tell you, I am prophesying that when God brings about the harvest for Love and Light Ministries, He's going to jump the world. In other words, last week I was sharing a message and the Bible says that if a sinner 
I got all the money in the world playing wrong with God that he will take that and give it to somebody in his kingdom and I say God that God be us so wherever person out there with all them zeros after that one or three Holy Spirit minister right now I declare that the, 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 the love and light LA, LM, I those letters will be in their eyes right now release the check in Jesus name I don't know what it is. I know somebody get called to say, like a spot here, come and drop. Because I can show when we got the drop on whatever spot we get. I know what it's saying, so every saying. But there's a reason why I ain't share it yet. We found the meeting you can hear, you can see. Because people thought that over the years we were wasting time. The council and everybody, we have been taking our time. We have had some disappointments. But we trust in a big God. So folks, we must hold on to what God has established, boy. I, 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 I don't know. We must hold tight to what God has told us. And remember that our seed, that is financial, that is seeds of, uh, our, our seeds of uninterrupted useful deeds towards others, has a set season, then it will be true. If we do not do what? Disrupt the process by giving up. Understand that once we steer the course, Believers, we are guaranteed that we will reap what we have planted. We must fight the temptation to quit just because we become tired. Tiredness must not, cannot be an excuse. Of course, the garden and all of that is hard work. When I was a youngster, as the, you plant one thing and the weeds come up, your parents need to do that hard work. They send you to go and fork up the garden. Almost everybody in the point had, had a garden, especially when you move up the parks and fields. And you had a certain, you see that grass, you don't know, oh God, no, my mother can call me, you know. And I go out there, drop my foot inside the floor and turn over and take out all that grass. So we used to make some fun with it. It was a wet one, that and all sort of thing. You even eat mud and all. Oh, only me eat mud. Okay. When I eat the mud, I'm marl. I'm mar mar no, son, say you mouth, you mouth white, yeah, the marl, it'll look pretty in your TSA. Anybody? All right, boy, look at that. Why want the boy know eat marl and mud, no? Anyhow, I T.S. mud already. I can't want to tell me. You juice the mud here, right? Well, June said T.S. good? Well, all these little children eat mud and things. When you remember? No, boy, never met my mud kids. So it looks so good you bite them. Come on, man. The Lord know all that, man. Don't tell lies, man. Don't, don't go and eat no sin from when I serve, man. All the way I eat mud, put up your hand. All right, don't worry. <laughs> and you know that in those days we used to be sick. We used to be sick. Ramp up barefoot, half naked or naked. Roll up and all sort of thing. Say so you walk out. Why you walk so white, mommy? Uh, my, my mouth? Full of the mar because in, in days gone, but especially around Christmas now, people marling up all across the driveway and thing. You all remember? We want, we want snow, so we take all this white marl and put it all around the house. Who there? Christmas was fun, though. So, folks, let us understand. Here's Psalm 126, 5 to 6 in the NIV. Hear this. Those who sow with tears will reap with what? With songs of joy. This morning, I am sure that there are people in this church who got some rough things happening. Got some some things that you're looking to God for. But you know what you did this morning? You pushed past that and you lifted your hands and give God praise. In the midst of the tears, you were able to reap some joy. The joy of knowing that the God you serve is bigger than your circumstance. You've been able to lift your hands even although physically you didn't feel like doing it. You lift your hands because the joy of the Lord was your strength. It says that those who go out weeping. But here's how you weep. You don't weep and scare your mouth. You weep in the midst of carrying your seed to sow. In other words, the process is difficult. I need to see some harvest. I need to see something coming up. But I've got to go and I've got to plow the field, the process. So I'm weeping, it's hard, I'm tired, it's difficult, but I push 
Why? Because I understand that if I'm going to reap the harvest, I've got to carry the seed to sow. And tell somebody, carrying the seed hurts. Carrying the seed costs. Somebody give God a praise now. So in the midst of carrying your seed and looking for your harvest, give God a praise. Because you understand that that tough process is going to bring you to what? You're going to come back after being able to pull up them carrots or pull up those beets and run with a song of joy. Hallelujah! All the hard work has paid off. Hallelujah! But we get too impatient. Carrots take it five weeks. You want carrots to take a day. Who is you? <laughs> tell somebody harvest time is coming. But tell them you're going to wait upon it. You gotta go through the process. Tell them you gotta hurt through it. You gotta sweat through it. Come on. Carrying the sheaves with them. Folks, that also speaks. Because you know the sheaves and the shaft is getting getting problems. But understand, God is with us. Folks, we must endure seasons of sorrow. And I believe that love and light, we've been there. Other churches, too, I can only speak. We've been there. We've had loss of life. We've had loss of members. We've had uh, people uh, not understanding what we are doing and speaking evil of what we do and all of that. We have had our sorrows, but we must endure seasons of sorrow. But God promises that those watch the words who faithfully sow, even through hardship, Will one day reach a harvest of joy? Folks, I say to you, and you probably know better than me, that there's hope in the midst of trials. But look forward to this. Look over to somebody and say, the harvest will be a time of celebration. Lift your hands and say, God, I look forward to celebration time. So when we get there, I'm going to preach a message. It is celebration time. So hold that. Because the, the, the harvest is in trend. The harvest is, is, is maturing. It's, it's coming up. Can you see it? Folks, can you see it? I know that you feel it. Because we've had our problems. You feel it. But can you see it? Can you see it in the spirit realm? Are you believing for it? How many of you are believing for it? Never want me to think that 22 years is something. I think of the church out there in um, um, oh, to where our Angela used to live, Berean Church. They were in, 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 in Batsuas for years, had that line up there, couldn't get it changed, used at all. And that's what I said. And, and the pastor of that church, the same year they opened the church, or a year after, he died at 70 years old. He was able to walk into that church, see what the vision that God had given to him come to fruition, and he died almost a year later. You got to you got accept that as part of the process? You think that I serve in God or as a pastor of the church because they want to be fat boy together and say, I, Mark Hayward, look what God has done through me. I'm the star of the show. No, because had it not been for the people holding up my hands, had it not been for you people being what? Faithful. All the Mark Hayward talk or whatever, it could not have happened. So giving ourselves a round of applause. Definitely like when I self clap that week. Clap, clap that week. I know if you're the time is I would have clap hard for myself. So let me move on quickly. Okay, I got to twelve. There's a problem. Right. Folks, I want to kind of relate this to us this morning. I don't know about you, but I hope you are like me. That as a church, trust in God for our harvest in this present season of our... And we're going into a new year. That's what we're talking about, the season. We are all believing for our harvest, aren't we? For how many of you can testify that we have sown seeds towards it? Every effort with us and the school teachers, with our children. We had a batch of children now going off to university two years ago, a year ago. That run about here, 22 years from their age. 
They ain't went for no drugs. They ain't getting no pregnant. Oh, they're locked. They ain't do nothing. So, and they're at university now, all because of the effort many of us in here, if not all of us, have put into them. I give God a praise. So don't let you, don't, don't because you don't see a church, don't your, your um, importance hospitality, your importance Sunday school teachers, your importance elders. Yeah, we tussle and all kind of thing. But why do we tussle with each other? Not because we hate one another. We tussle because we want the best for God. Amen? Amen? But like, when it's assured. So, so folks, that this, this harvest that we are looking for, it appears to be taking longer than we anticipated for sure. Amen? Because we had a letter in our hands saying that, that a particular government would sell us a parcel of land. Government change and I get that way. But I want to assure you today, our harvest time is coming. And I'm confident that this is true. Why? Because God's word and his promises are eternal. How many of you know that? And if we just don't quit, if we faithfully sow, even through the hardship, we will one day reap a harvest of joy. Folks, it is only a matter of time. Tell somebody, it is only a matter of time until all long-awaited blessing arrives. Tell somebody, it is only a matter of time until all long-awaited blessing arrives. Somebody give God some praise in anticipation of our blessing. Devil is a liar. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 5-8, it says, So my dear brothers and sisters, and this is my word from my heart to you, my brothers and sisters of Love and Light Ministries, all you warriors, all you faithful ones, be strong. Be immovable. Please always work enthusiastically for the Lord. You're not doing it for me up past the cafe or the church. You're doing it for God. For you know that nothing you do, I might not get to tap you, pay you, book, pay you back, hospitality science for the good job you all do, or Sunday school teachers haven't been doing it in Sunday school for a little while to, you know, and we ain't get together. But Christmas coming, you never know what can happen. But the point is, recognize that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Did you hear that? Did you feed somebody this week? You lend somebody a fifty dollar or get to them. The boy see that, but God says, you see, when you do, He can bless openly. When you do it, you don't go tell nobody. You go let it laugh. I know we're right hand doing it, but I always tell people the one person who takes one hundred percent accurate record of everything we do. Is God. And if you understand your mission on earth, if people know, you, you know you're human, you want somebody to pat you by your back. I would like that. Pat my when I come off here, give me a little pat. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't change my enthusiasm for the things of God. Because if you look to man to bless you or to please you, you will get hurt almost all the time. So, folks, be strong and immovable. You can only be that if you stick close to the source, connected to the source. Always work for God, whatever you're calling. If you don't know it, it's fine, don't And do it with enthusiasm. For understand God keeps perfect record. God's word, believers, is true. I don't think I've got to tell you much more. So I encourage you to remain steadfast and keep thanking God for the harvest. God has in store that which has been tailor-made for us. That is why when I go into people's churches, I go in, some of my fellow pastors have nice buildings now, I go in and I admire, I see where they have the television, I see whether they have chandeliers or all the equipment all around the place. I do not ever say to myself, my church is going to be built like this. Nope. Because you see, that could be a little part of covetousness. I believe that when we get to build our church, it's going to be uniquely ours. When people step into it, they will know. You see this here? There's never been anything, and I'm talking about size, nothing, but there's never been anything like this because it is going to be uniquely tailor-made for us. But folks, we got to believe it and don't get weary of well-doing. Just, 
As I close, just as the harvest comes after a season of hard labor, our spiritual and physical harvest will come if we remain, watch these words, steadfast in our efforts to live righteously. What I want you to do, right? I want you to hear me. Your effort is required, but the important thing is not just the effort and what it produces. Everything must happen so that you and I continue to live righteously. I don't want a building and we both here living how we like. I don't want to be blessed financially, biggest car, traveling out, you know, cruises every year, and I enjoy my life, thank Jesus for that, and living how I like. Remember that the harvest, the whole focus is for us to reap, to share, and to show people who God is. Want to get it? So, I say to us this morning, God's timing is perfect. I've been encouraged, but as I see this verse so many times, and it really blessed me. I had other things to share. I probably share times that already about this, but this particular thing just hit me. God's timing is perfect. What is required for us is that we must trust that our diligence, see the things we got to do, that our diligence will bear fruit. Close your eyes with me. Don't close your eyes yet. How many of you believe that our harvest time is coming? And I thought next 10 years is coming. They can put the word soon. How many of you? I want, I can pray at the end. I want y'all to, recording it all way. There's a song, it goes, We lift up, that's what it's called, Kathy. We lift up your name, O oh Lord, giving you honor and praise. See if you can find out for me. Folks, I, I am going to ask again, how many believe that our due season is upon us? You see, one of the things that we've got to understand, a lot of what God will do, and he can do we God do what God do, but it's activated by our faith. So you know some of you say, my, yeah, you say so, but you say so, I see nine. Listen to me, right? Let me let the devil take his place. I'm going to ask every member again. You don't got to put it in your hand if you feel it later. But how many of you believe that we are closer to our season than we ever were? How we know? It hasn't been easy. Right now, financially, we look at our own financial past, you know, you get saying, oh, we got to look for blocks in it. I am believing that when God has given us the breakthrough, some of y'all gonna look into one of the wallets and find money that would have been there today or that your wallet had the capacity, or your brain had the capacity to think, because God will not give us something that he can't accomplish. So folks, look over to somebody and say, can't wait, because it means I can be blessed. If my church can be blessed, because the church, I got to be blessed too. Can't put the car before the horse. If this church is to get a building and get it right and all of that, and they own a body, nothing, folks, you got to be blessed. My look towards heaven and say, Lord, bless me. My direct radically, bless me. Come on, power in the town, bless me. Lord, not just physical blessings, but God, I want money. Come on, is the love of money not the money? Father, we want money. The devil trick you. When they go by, can't even say money, go by, Marcia, tell Marcia, you want me to go holler, pray to God. They're going to tell me so, but God bring back cash. You know, I mean, boy, you live poor, and the Lord said, you don't cover it. You don't cover it now. you asking God to bless his church. You are the church. You are the church. Want to find this out? Folks, if you believe that we are on the brink of our breakthrough, here's what we can do to mess with the devil. We are going to give God praise as we sing this song. We are going to give God praise like if we have already received a blessing. When you're with me, stand quickly if you're with me. I know some gonna take a year call, but I, like me, you know. But, but you, maybe if you stand up fast, you will get your healing. He deserves the praise. He deserves the glory. Let he deserves the glory. Raise the music. Hallelujah. We are gonna do that. Hallelujah. Put it the words if you can. We are going to praise and worship God like if we have the building. You with me? 
Give God some praise. Start. Hallelujah. Come on, bring up the music tomorrow, man. Come on, let's do this. Let us feel it in the chest. Come on. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. We are believing that our harvest time is here, and we are giving God praise. Come on. And glory, say. Outside, outside. Come on, let me do it. Let me believe. Wisdom and power eh, be unto Hallelujah. We are giving him praise. Like if we are right in our harvest. Come on. We are about to reap somebody say. We thank you Lord. Everybody sing. We lift up your name. Giving when who was slain giving you honor with our hands up raised to you Lord now come on don't look both do it you want your breakthrough do it Jesus church sure help me Come church here. And glory belongs to our God. Hey, and unto the Lamb on the throne. Blessing and honor, wisdom and power. Be unto God. Harvest time. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah, somebody, yeah. Come now, yeah. To the great I am. Everybody, at least one of your hands. Come now, sing. We lift up. Give me the lamb who was slain. Hey, taking all our pain. Sing. We lift up our hands. Oh, Lord, giving you honor and praise. With our hands of praise to you. Believe for it next. Let's worship. To you, Lord. We're doing it out of form of fashion. We believe it for a miracle. Come on, somebody. Lift up. Help me lift Jesus' name. We're in a harvest time. We're going to sing it before the music. Stop the music. We lift up your name, oh Lord. Here's how I sing. The Lamb who was slain, taking all our pain. Sing it, church, sing, yeah. Oh Lord, we're giving you honor and praise with our hands up raised to you, Lord. Clap unto the Lord, somebody. Folks, we are in our harvest time. How many of you, look over to somebody and say, believe for it. Tell them, because the God we serve is bigger than any circumstance. Let's give God a big praise. Hallelujah. Give me the song. Hallelujah. This power and praise. Father, we are believing today. 
that what you have promised you can deliver so we look to you right now it looks like a mountain for love and light but God is bigger come on they say this change will never change. Oh, I know it's going to break. Come on. But they don't know you like we do. She's some volume. There is power in your name. Somebody say. We know that there is no way through. We heard that. We're believing it. We've heard the tide will never, never change. change. It's turning around for love and light. Come on. They haven't seen what you can But we are not do. trusting in ourselves, but a big God. There is power in your name. Somebody say so, so much, much power in your name. Move the air Move above. above. Break, Break the unbreakable. God, we believe. Church, do we believe? God, we believe for it. God, we believe. God, we believe. Father, we believe in you. That this is a timely word. We know that hope is never lost. Are you hopeful, love and light? Oh, Hallelujah. For there is still an empty grave. My Jesus, he's alive. God, we believe no matter what. Ooh. There is So much power in your name. Move, God. Move it. Break the unbreakable flow. Yeah, we believe. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. Yeah. God, we believe. Now watch this. Come on. Come. You are the way. That's what it's all about. The church is for God's glory. Come on. Because you have the, at the appointed time. Come on. There seems to be no. We the case of poor for things. Open your mouth. God, you have the final We believe. believe. Sing do you believe? God, we believe for oh. from God, you bring a miracle. We'll see a miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we believe in you today. We believe in you today, God. We are believing. You said, I believe. You said, it is done. Believe. You said, we release it over our lives. Lord, we believe you here. Yeah. God, at your point in time, you do what you got to do. Oh, Lord, you, you said, said, I believe. believe. You, you said, said, it is done. Somebody, you, you said, over your life, church. I believe. Over your circumstances, church. You it is done. You said, I believe. Hallelujah. You said, whatever it is, believe God. It is done. For your healing, say, He said, you can be healed. Your finances can be fixed. Lord, 
Say it one more time. Somebody need to say it one more time. God, you said it, I believe it. It's not here yet, but I believe. Church, God, we believe. God, we believe for it from the impossible. We speak life. We'll see a miracle. God, we believe. Hallelujah. God, we believe for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, today we ask you to help us to be patient as we wait for the seeds that we have sown to grow. And Father, we believe that they shall be multiplied back into our lives. For your word declares that you are no debtor of persons. We release our faith and believe that our harvest is coming. But Father, we want to add to that at the appointed time. For we understand, God, that you are large and in charge. And so, Father, at times of weariness, Father, we pray that when the attacks will come, that, God, you would give us the strength, Holy Spirit, not to surrender to the pressures and the extenuated circumstances that will make us feel tempted to throw in the towel. Help us, Lord, to make every determination not to bend, not to break, not to give up on God your promise God that we will enter a season of reaping a harvest from the good seed that we have sown father I pray that you will empower us with power to hold tight empower us with power to remain steadfast until we reap our harvest and enjoy the fruit of our faith and labor I pray even now father that you will strengthen your people today Father, many of us in here are standing, and we are barely standing. Many of us are, have many challenges in our lives, whether it be financial, physical, mental. But God, we understand that you are bigger than any circumstance. So, Father, I pray, because you are awesome, God, you are a magnificent God. God, that you will meet each and every one of us in a personal way at the point of our need. Uh, we come against every plan of the enemy that will seek to sidetrack us. Uh, we come against the enemy that will seek to mess with our minds, uh, to mess with our lives, to uh, cause doubt to come into our life. I come against every spirit of disappointment and discouragement in the name of Jesus Christ. Every hurt, God, may your peace break it up. And so, Father, we declare that you are the Lord of the harvest. Hallelujah. That should bring confidence to us that you are the Lord of the harvest. You are faithful. Your word is true. So, Father, today we rest in these truths. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody just give God a praise. Before we sit, is there anybody here today who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Folks, we have been saying this every week. Whether we at funerals, we have weddings, we're going to start at weddings too. But look, time is short, so we ain't got the time. We've got to let one to know the truth. If you are here, maybe you'll be coming to church. You have not made a commitment of your life to Jesus. You have to do that. Come in church, can't save you. Only Jesus can save you. So I don't care what nice person you are, you don't curse, you don't steal, you don't smoke herb, I don't care. You have to make a personal confession of Jesus Christ as your Lord. If you're here today, this is important, just as important, your job, your money, even your life. As a matter of fact, your life. If you're here and you probably saying to me, Pastor, go along, go along, don't, don't, don't convict, it is not me, the Spirit of God. I recognize, right? You might say it to yourself like I did some years ago. I, go back, I, I used to be back to go back and I do so much wrong things. They say, I don't care how much wrong you do. do. You can't wait. You get everything right to serve Jesus. He is the one who will do the cleaning up. You can't do it in your strength. 
So if you're here today and you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, don't think about what can happen right after the decision. You make that decision because the God we serve is not that of person. And the God we serve is able to keep. All of us here can testify of that. We are saying we stand here perfect, but God has kept us. And he will keep you too. So if you are here you do not know him, and he will say to me, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Would you lift your hand? I'll see that hand and I'll lead you to Christ this morning. I ain't rushing. I can give you a few more seconds. You're thinking maybe, but I can go and do this. I'm going to let go of my boyfriend. No, you just go and stop doing certain things with him and let him know you change now. And that you're living for the Lord. And if he loves you, he got going to say, no, he said, but at least we'll have Maria. Although I know you might be martyred on the outside, so you got to be careful. That's another story. But don't, don't try to get down at the end of the story. Start where you're going to start at the beginning. And folks, I tell them all the time, if I want to bring anybody to this church, I want boy close eyes too, because we don't want to intimidate nobody. Whisper to them and ask them, you're frightened or what? You want to give life to the Lord? I can go up there with you. Again, if you're here today, you do not know him, and you right there knowing your heart, you, 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 you need a change in your life, Jesus can bring about that change. Would you lift your hand? Is there one person in the house? Two people. We always believe that on Facebook and YouTube, that people, somebody out there would have given their lives to the Lord. If that is you listening to me, watching me this morning, all you need to do is to say this prayer. There's nothing in the prayer. I'm just helping you to touch God for yourself. But it has to be a hard thing. You've got to mean these words, all right? Say after me. Father, I come to you today recognizing that I am a sinner. I also recognize that I cannot save myself. So, Lord Jesus, I ask you today to forgive me for all my sin. And with that same faith of asking and this heart of repentance, I ask you, no, Lord, to come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior, and I thank you for doing it. Amen. Father, for that person or person who said that prayer, pray your hand of blessing will be upon them. Father, you will protect and keep them like only you can. And we ask these things in order name, but the name of Jesus Christ that everybody say, amen. If you've made that decision there on Facebook or uh, YouTube later on, remember, you can call us up. Your record is 246, 436-5256. Email us at Love and Light Ministries, INT, that's Love and Light Ministries International, Love and Light Ministries, INT at gmail.com, and ask for our free FRWE New Converts course. If as you're going through the material, you contact us again, you're having issues, we have ambassadors that will look after you and take you through the material so you understand it better. Since we've come to the end of our service, don't forget that we have our three evenings of Connected, our marriage conference with Dr. Paul Cannons starting on Tuesday. He'll be here tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon around 12.30. For those who are listening to us, now getting this message, there's still time. We have lots of room. And we're encouraging people who might, you know, feel their marriages are good and know their marriages are good. You may not need any more instruction, but maybe, as you heard this morning, you can, um, you can sponsor somebody, you know, that you know could use it. Just tell them, listen, go and relax. Um, it's in front of some ministry for three nights. Uh, we're going to be offering some refreshments. We're going to have a laid back time, you're going to be able to sit with um, Dr. Cannons and, and he promises you know, if there's some major challenges, maybe that common to a couple couples to go to the side and work with you on those things and, um, and so on. So we look forward to that. So uh, continue though if you're not participating to pray for us um, to break even, we need about another 10 couples uh, because we are not in this to make money. We believe that um, this is a serious time. You know, I, I've spoken to quite a number of pastors. I, I dare say in our own churches um, we, we have uh, challenges with mar mar marriages and so on. And, and if you look at the percentages of divorces, a lot of them, large percent, comes out of God's church. So these things are very important. And we are also trying to, I've been speaking to um, the leaders of the marriage ministry, the Johnsons, that we really, and I've been putting it out there, that we have a, a pretty viable marriage ministry. A lot of churches don't have them. And we are going to make ourselves available to show them what we do here and to get marriages on course in all the churches that we are connected to. I'm hopeful that um, we will be able to extend what we do to other churches, those who are willing for it. So continue to keep your church in prayer. And folks, may God continue to bless you and keep you. May his face continue to shine upon you. May you truly experience his peace. We're going to do our declaration. The prayer has been said, and when we say amen, it done. Amen. Hold on to somebody's hands, and let's do this. Amen.